Hi, this is Mark Marcantonio. I'm excited today because yesterday I received my Active Target 2 units and I ordered and uh, received two units because I plan to use dual units. The new Active Target 2 and the new HDS Pros, I've ordered an HDS Pro 16 and a Pro 12. They haven't quite arrived yet. When they get when they arrive, I'll do a video about them as well. But on those units, as well as even on the carbons and the uh, live units, um, you can use Active Target 2. But with the Pros, you get the advantage of being able to display two Active Target two units at the same time. So my plan is to use one Active Target 2 in the um, forward view because that's the one I depend on and use the most. And the second one I will place in the scout view. And I'm going to initially start with both of these transducers on my ghost trolling motor. And after I've learned how to use them best on the trolling motor, I'll consider then putting one or both transducers on a separate pole mount. But for the moment, I prefer to use the ghost trolling motor. And so that's how I'm gonna set these up. Now in today's video, I'm gonna start off with the wiring portion. I'll show you where I'm going to mount both active target uh, boxes and how I'm going to wire those together on my Ranger boat and we'll take it from there. So I'll do this in segments piece by piece. Stay with me. This is Mark Marcantonio. Ciao. Okay, so if you saw my earlier Active Target videos for the Active Target one, you'll know that I placed my Active Target box in my starboard rod locker where it's protected from the elements and also is accessible so I can see what's going on with it. I removed my Active Target one already and I know it's kind of dark in here, but next to that fire extinguisher and below my 3D structure scan, in this location is where I'm going to mount one of the Active Target 2 boxes and the second one I'm going to put on the wall in front of the fire extinguisher over here so they're both close together. I'm going to run the wires through where I've got this snake, some uh, red snake from Harbor Freight, fiberglass snake. The wiring is going to go up through that corner and then it's going to go um, under my console and come out on the side wall over where these wires are coming out and then i'm going to wire it to this fuse box up under my console so both boxes will be wired there i'm also going to wire while i'm here a power cable for my underwater video camera that i use in conjunction with my hds units i display the video uh, picture on my HDS unit on my console most often sometimes on the bow unit so I've got this power cable I'm going to run this along with the other wiring and install that at the same time as well so that's that's the plan now let's go over to the unpacking of my active target 2 boxes I should also mention that when I removed my Active Target 1 transducer, I taped this red uh, fiberglass snake to the end of the transducer cable and I pulled it back out through the bow and, um, and that way I've got the snake already installed for installing my Active Target 2 transducers. Now I'm going to have to run two transducer cables through the conduit that goes in the gunnel on my starboard side and that is going to be a really tight fit i don't even know if i can do it um i'm going to wait till i have a, someone else to help me to work on both ends so i have someone at both ends of the snake and the cables so that i can push and pull back and forth until i get through and into this area and hopefully that will work if it doesn't i'll have to come up with a new plan for running the second transducer cable i know i can get one through I don't know if I can get two through. So I also ran a second rope through that, that gunnel um, conduit at the same time. So, and that's a good trick, by the way. Whenever you're pulling cable, it's if you run a snake through a, a conduit like that, it's always good to pull an extra cord through there so that you have a spare ready to go the next time you need to run anything through that conduit, extra set of wiring or transducer cable. 
Okay, let's go to the units. Okay, here are my two Active Target 2 units. Let's take them out of the box. I've already opened one box and taken the instruction manual out, and I've read it three times so that I can figure out how I wanted to plan this setup. So, don't know if my setup is going to be ideal, but I'm going to try it. We'll see how it works, and I'll report back on it. But I'm pretty confident after reading the instructions and having fished with Active Target 1 for since its inception, I feel pretty confident I've got the best way to rig it up. So, two Active Target units in here. Turn this box upside down. Here's the other. Looks very much like Active Target 1 in the boxing. I didn't expect there'd be much difference. Okay some material instruction manuals here's the box box looks just like the active target one box so again I'm going to mount one on the inside wall I'm going to mount the other on the rear wall of my rod locker and connect them together here's the transducer What's different and nice with Active Target 2 that they didn't do with Active Target 1 was they put reference lines, big white lines, on the unit so that you can line up the angle of your transducer properly. And then they give you various different mounts with it and, and power cables. This is the main thing I'm going to work on today is the, is the wiring. But you've got several different mounting options. All the mounts come with it. The only mount that doesn't come with this is if you're using dual units, there's an optional uh, Scout Wide mount that you can get. And I'm not going to use the Scout Wide. I'm not uh, planning on using that. So I will not worry about that at this moment. Everything I need is included. And I'm going to mount, like I say, both transducers. I'm going to mount on my ghost trolling motor. I'm going to mount one in the scout mode and I'm going to mount one in the forward mode and go from there. So today, this video is going to be about the wiring, the, not the ethernet, but the power wiring. So I'm going to set up the power wires. I'm going to run both of them into that back corner of the starboard rod locker and around to that fuse block. I'll probably uh, connect them together. And one difference that you have is that on the the active target too you're going to actually use that blue wire in addition to the black red and yellow wires so i've um you can see better against here the blue wire is going to be connected to the power cable of the second active target unit twist it together and um, in that way it synchronizes the pulses of the transducer so that you eliminate all interference and get a clear view on both transducers while running them at the same time. The black wire I'm going to hook up just like my Active Target 1 was to my uh, ground bus under my console and I'm going to hook the red up to power and I'm going to hook the yellow to one of my accessory switches on my Ranger and on the second power cord I'm going to connect that yellow wire to a second accessory switch on um, under my console for at my console where the accessory switches are located so I'll have bo both yellow wires to accessory switches both red and black wires to the power and the negative buses and the two blue wires tied together so that's the plan and I'm going to get started and I'll show you step by step along the way stay tuned okay in the box is a brown envelope and inside it contains the parts for mounting the, the active target box to the wall. It's got the screws in there. It's got a fuse holder. I'm not going to use that fuse holder. 
Uh, instead, I'm going to use a fuse box and I'm going to put the supplied 5 amp fuse in that fuse box uh, where it's a lot easier for me to get to. Here's the 5 amp fuse it comes with and that'll push right into my fuse box where I connect it and like I say it's got the screws in here uh, and a connector for the wiring which I'm, I'll be using. So that's that. Also in the box was a smaller box that contains the parts for the transducer uh, comes with a trolling motor mount piece and washers and a knob and bolts to uh, all for mounting the transducer which I'll be using these as well and we'll save those for later okay so this is where I'll mount the new new box um, against the wall in this position far enough away where I can still get to my uh, fire extinguisher but I'll mount it up here like this and then I'll mount the other one where I had the previous box and there's my 3d structure scan which they'll be tied into uh, Ethernet cable going to the 3d structure scan as a hub using that as a hub so we'll go ahead and start on the wiring now Okay, I am going to cut some of the sheathing off of the power cables. I'm just going to take a little bit off at a time because it's a pretty tough, a pretty tough jacket. And the reason why I need to do this is because I need the yellow wire to be longer than my red, black, and blue wires. So I'm just pulling off little pieces at a time. So they carefully so I don't damage the, the wiring. Okay, now I'm gonna cut. Leave my yellow long and I'm gonna cut my red, black, and blue shorter. measure and see if that's going to work. I need to take a little more off. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And we'll do the same on this side. Here. Try the whole sheet this time, see if we can get it. one pull on that one which is much better okay measure these again Okay, I've made some labels. Active target. I've I've labeled them active target B and active target A. And I'm going to put those on the wires at both ends so that I know which wire goes to to which active target. And that's always a good good thing to do. Take a label off. Okay. 
Okay, active target A, labeled. By the way, I got these labels, they're waterproof labels, and I got them on Amazon. Very inexpensive. You can use your printer and print them, but I've got a laser printer. They're designed for bubble or inkjet printers. So I just wrote them on with a marker, a uh, waterproof marker. Okay, there's active target B ready to go. I'll go ahead and strip off the ends of these wires and put connectors on them. Um, uh, I just stripped the blue wire. Now I'm going to strip the red wire. And the black wire. I'm going to put terminals on these with heat shrink um, and sealant so that they stay in great shape. I'm going to actually put a butt connector on the yellow wire. So, when you're doing marine connections, I get these um, connectors on Amazon, and they are uh, a company by the name of Histronica, and they come in multiple sizes and ring terminals and butt connectors and spade connectors and so forth. But they're heat shrink um, insulation on them. Uh, but if you're gonna use these, which I re highly recommend, and I highly recommend you also get their ratcheting crimpers uh, as well because these are what you need in order to attach these heat shrink connectors tightly without breaking the insulation and hurting the in damaging the insulation. So, for instance, on this red wire, I'm going to put this red... Um, ring terminal on it that's going to screw to my fuse block and I'll twist the wires a little bit first get the ends tightly together and then slide the connector on like that and then because it's a red I'll use the red dot on this ratcheting pliers Okay, and then I just give it a squeeze until the ratchet releases and then that crimps it in place but makes that um, doesn't break through the plastic covering, the heat shrink covering. And so you get a nice tight connection, make sure you check it. And then I'll go ahead and use a heat gun like this and I'll shrink it to the wire. Take a second for the heat gun to heat up. Now it's starting to shrink tight to the wire. Do all sides of it evenly. Okay, got a nice tight perfect connection 
waterproof, that's not going anywhere. Now I'll do that to all of the terminals except on the yellow wire. I'm going to put a butt connector and I'll go ahead and show you that now. Let's go ahead and use a red butt connector. Okay, I got one end of the butt connector. The other end, my wire from my accessory switch and my Ranger is going to go into that end. And I will wait to heat shrink this till I put the other wire in and crimp it and then heat shrink both at the same time. Do the black wire. I'll use the blue ring terminal for the black wire. Check it, that's good. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the blue one after I get these on. Try to do it evenly and rotate it as you do it so it shrinks evenly all the way around. And I'm looking for the air pockets inside to disappear. And that tells me I've got it shrunk all the way down to the wire. All right. Perfect. Okay, let me get the other one set up and then we'll be right back. Okay, working on my other active target power cable. I'm going to go ahead and put the power wire connector on. Okay. Negative one. Okay, put the buck connector on. Let's go with the blue on this one. Can separate it. do with the blue wire is I'm going to take this little end cap that came in this little bag with the active target unit and I'm going to take my two blue wires of my two power cables and I'm going to twist them together I'm going to stick this cap in here, if I can get it to fit. Yep, it fits. Good. I don't know if this will crimp it. We'll see. I'll crimp it with these. Got to make sure I get it a little tighter. Okay, they're tight. Okay, now use the heat gun to heat shrink. 
those other two terminals. Okay, those are both heat shrunk together, nice and tight. Blue wires together, and each yellow wire will go to, each one will go to an accessory switch on my dash panel. Both of those cables will go up through my gunnel and around to my fuse box underneath. And power is set up and ready to go. And I'll start to string it through next. Okay, here's the a power cable with a cigarette lighter female plug on one end. And I'm that's what I'm going to use for my AquaView video camera that I work with along use along with my HDS Pro 16 and 12 screens. So, I'm going to go ahead and wire that up at the same time. Uh, the one with the red stripe is the positive. I'm going to go ahead and put the red terminal on that one. Do it like the others. Yep, that wasn't tight enough. I got the crimp in the wrong place. Too far at the base. We'll do that again. I want to make sure it stays attached. I do not want it to come apart when I'm on the water. Okay, make sure I get this positioned in the right place this time. There we go. Okay. Got it. I'll do the blue one. Doing all this with screw terminals and these connectors is a good thing because whenever I have a problem down the road, Maybe in the middle of a two-day tournament or three-day tournament, everything will be easy to remove. It's all labeled, so I know where to look. And I won't have problems that I can't solve quickly. Okay, let's get these shrunk. You can see I've already got it labeled, the wire's labeled. labeled with my video negative and positive so that's done too okay now I'm going to tape these wires together so they'll be easier to feed through um, and get them into place so what I think I'll do is I'll take all of these and I'll wrap some electrical tape around the end fold the yellow wire over take some tape and then I'll remove this once I get them fed through try to make it as compact as I can
end and fold it over so it's easy to find the end and get it all peeled off. And then I'll put some tape around the main body. Help keep them all together. Probably will leave that tape on. Okay, take the tie ra the tie wires off. The two power cables. Okay, there's my power cable that I'm going to run through. I'm not going to tape the whole thing in case I ever need to remove one or the other individually. I don't want them taped together up inside my hall where I can't get to it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to feed through and out and over to my fuse box. Okay, I'm going to try to feed this through the upper corner of my starboard rod locker and around the console. See if I can get to it from the other side. Okay, I'm up under the console of my Ranger. There, here's an access port. I initially reached through here to grab those wires that I fed out of my starboard rod locker for the power cables. And then I poked them into this other hole, the wire hole over here and here they are coming out of that hole and here's the end of them and let's see um, these are the two Ranger wires that came with my Ranger and you can see I had the yellow wire um, two yellow wires attached one's my 3d structure scan the other is the um, Active Target 2, or Active Target 1 that I had before. I'm going to replace these with the new um, connectors and redo that. And then I'll run the wires underneath and over to my fuse, fuse box here and attach them all to that fuse box. Okay, I ran the wires behind all my other wires. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off the tape that I had wrapped around them. Okay, straighten all that out. I'm going to run all of these over to my fuse box and connect them all. And the yellow wires I'm going to connect to my accessory switches. I'm going to try something that um, I don't know if it'll work. It should work. No reason why it won't. But I'm going to take these two Active Target 2 wires and I'm going to um, tie them together and put them on a single accessory switch. In that way, I'll be waking both of them up at the same time. And I only have two accessory wires in the back and I need one for my 3D structure scan. And so I'll put the two Active Targets together on the other and we'll try that out and see if that works, which I bet it will.
Okay, I got the all the wires landed on the terminal buses there, so all of the uh, both active targets and my video camera uh, wires, my SS3 structure scan 3D, all there. Put in five amp fuses for each of the active targets, and I've got a three amp fuse for my SS3D and also for my HDS12 that'll be running back here. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach the uh, fuse block up against my um, console, and then I'm going to tie wrap the cables and protect them, and all the wiring part on this side will be done. Okay. Got the fuse box back in place up against the bulkhead and I've got the labels all on the fuse cover so that I know which goes where and I also have the labels on the wires and now all I have to do is tie wrap up the wires and protect them and we're gonna be good to go this is a nice secure system and it's nice having all of my electronics on a separate wire that's uh, a, a duplex Encore marine grade um, eight gauge uh, wire that I've got going directly to a lithium battery that's a house battery and by having all my electronics on a house battery I can run them all day they won't run out of power it's a lithium 100 amp um, house battery and I'm not pulling power away from my starting battery so I don't have to worry about my outboard not starting when I need to head back in at the end of a tournament. So uh, I like the wiring setup. Alternatively, I could have put this fuse box in the rod locker, but I wanted it here because this is where I would be able to get under it and, and work on it if I need to without too much trouble. And uh, your choice, it could go either location, whichever you're comfortable with.